Okay, hello everybody, Miracosa College. Um, this discussion, we're going to talk about the Great Depression um, and some of the causes for it and some of the, the, the things that come out of the Reeves book, Chapter 7. So you make sure you look at the Reeves book and uh, understand Chapter 7, which covers the Great Depression. Now, one thing to understand, you know, coming out of, you know, the Industrial Revolution and then up into the Progressive Era, remember we had a lot of capitalists making a lot of money. And, it, you know, it was a belief that we should engage in a, in a system of social Darwinism. That's, ex, you know, that that's always existed where, um, you know, the concept of social Darwinism basically relies on, you know, survival of the fittest and that only the strong will survive. Um, we saw those progressive forms through Teddy Roosevelt that we talked about. And, you know, here in the United States, we have a combination of a mixed economy and a market economy, Right. Uh, you could do supply side economics or demand side economics. Supply side is that trickle down theory that we talked about that was popular with Reagan, popular with uh, W, and now popular with Trump. So the depression ran from 29 to 39, and it was the worst economic downturn in the history of our industrialized world. It all began when the stock market crashed in, in 1929, which sent Wall Street into a panic and wiped out millions and millions of investments. Um, you know, our GDP fell by an estimated 15% during that time. GDP is a gross domestic product. And there's really a complicated formula that comes out of determining your gross domestic product. But one thing that that does is it measures kind of the prosperity of your country and whether how much money your country is generating in revenue. Um, you know, by comparison, in 2008, when we had the Great Recession, uh, GDP only fell 1%. So imagine that. Um, the unemployment soared, and we went from 5 million unemployed up to 13 million in 1932. So just imagine that, 13 million people being out of work. So some of the causes, we actually had an unequal income distribution, um, which limited the number of customers for the products pouring out our nation's factories. Um, individuals' prosperities increased and significantly during that decade. And, you know, 5% of the population received 26.1% of the income. So let's look at the stock market crash. On October 24th, the market plunged, right, and it caused a panic. Um, they were origi originally um, able to halt the slide, but then five days later, Black Tuesday happened, and the market crashed, losing 12% of its value and wiped out about $14 million billion in investments. And remember, $14 billion in 1929 money. Uh, the banks also failed. So 700 banks failed in the waning months in 1929, and 3,000 collapsed. So that's an important thing to see. And, you know, we didn't have the federal deposit insurance uh, um, like we have now. Uh, federal deposit insurance means that the banks cover up to $250,000 of your money. In case there's a catastrophic incident in the banking industry, each of your accounts are protected up to two hundred and fifty grand. Right, so um, it's like insured. It's insured. Um, people are not able to purchase. You know, um, when you don't have money, you don't have a job. You can't buy things. So that kind of has a trickle down theory. So um, you know, we had things like repossessions and ev evictions and things that happened like that. And uh, you know, there was a lot of stuff left over. The unemployment rate, rate rose to above twenty five percent. In comparison, now our unemployment rate pre pandemic. Uh, was about 4%, right? So imagine that, uh, six times what the cur the current, um, and I haven't seen the latest numbers after people being put off because of the coronavirus, um, but, it, you know, six times of what we had pre-coronavirus. Also, you know, this kind of had a ripple effect throughout the world, um, and trade was limited, and trade fell by two-thirds between 29 and 34 um, so, you know, kind of, kind of, uh, the, the trickle down effect or the kind of the ripple effect that goes through, through the world when the economy sours here in the United States. Uh, we also had drought conditions, um, you know, droughts coupled with poor farming practices created what was called the Dust Bowl, which was from Southeast Colorado to the Texas Panhandle. Um, dust storms would kill, t would choke towns, kill crops, livestock, sicken people, and, you know, you know, we've seen pictures of those where, you know, there's a drought and there's not any, any, 
any water in the soil and it becomes dusty and that's a, a really um, bad thing to have. Uh, national income dropped from 82 billion to 40 billion. Uh, profits plummeted. You know, just looking at these numbers are pretty staggering. Uh, deficits in, uh, declined by, um, you know, companies reported deficits, production declined. Uh, construction dropped from 940 million to 74 million. So we can see that not a lot of projects happening, a lot of people out of work. And 5,000 banks went under, wiping out 9 million savings accounts, which is, you know, uh, com you know, look at the population then. That 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 was a a significant loss by the people. Um, nineteen twenty nine unemployment rate was thirty three point two percent, and then in nineteen thirty three we had twenty five percent. So in comparison today, I think unemployment rate is right around four percent. Um, but that is pre uh you know people getting laid off from hotels and and people being put off work. So that number is going to be increasing and maybe decreasing when the pandemic is is over with. Um, you know, there wasn't much, you know, protection for people. Uh, New York was offering families an average of $2.39 a week. Uh, Ford closed a lot of patent plants, costing 75,000 men their jobs. And assistance was only limited to seven and a half cents a day. And you can see kind of the desperation that might happen among people as we go through. Um, we talked a little bit about the drought conditions and the black blizzards, which blew away soil. And the heat coupled with the drought killed livestock. So what did the government do? The government established something called the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, which was, you know, uh, given uh, unprecedented authority to lend money to banks, railroads, and corporations. At this time, the RFC had loaned out close to $1.70 billion to try to bail out some of these industries that were going under. Uh, the New Deal under FDR also started to take um, uh, notice, and the New Dealers sought economic recovery and reform. So one thing is we have to reform the economy, at the same time, we'll recover the economy. So we started to see the growth in government, right? One of the things that were created out of this was unemployment insurance. So if you don't lose, if you lose your job by no fault of your own or by not having gross negligence, uh, you can collect unemployment. And unemployment is funded by uh, federal government along with the state government, and it's administered by the state government. So if you ever have to apply for unemployment, you would go through the state of California Employment De Development Division and uh, apply there. Uh, legalization of beer and the kind of the, 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 the um, wiping out of the 18th Amendment also had, they had a, had a, uh, a, a kind of a path in creating economic relief. Um, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation was established, uh, guaranteed deposits as high as $5,000 in 1934. Now it's up to 250000 So if you have a bank account, your money in that each account, not just you, in each account you have. So if you have a bank account at Bank of America, Chase, then maybe a credit union, uh, each of your accounts are protected up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So that's when people have people have a lot of money. They tend to spread it out over um, different accounts, so you don't put all your money into one. Uh, the National Industrial Recovery Act was, you know, passed to authorize the president to regulate industry for fair wages. Uh, these bills were used to protect unions and collective bargaining, and we started to see a a a growth in unions at this time. Uh, we saw the Public Works Administration, which, uh, you know, the government put into act where people would, um, you know, put people back to work in construction, building things like schools, uh, municipal buildings, hospital, bridges, libraries, and so on. Uh, the CCC, or the Civil Civilian Conservation Corps, also proved to be effective. Um, they Their whole goal was to plant trees, uh, fight fires, stock fish control bugs, um, build shelters, lookout towers, and kind of the things to preserve our natural resources. And the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority, was built and operated dams in seven states. 
that could also, in a sense, gen kind of generate hydroelectricity. So Security Act was also packed, passed, right? So uh, kind of provide a safety net for people that are, are unable to work through a couple of different ways. Um, you can get Social Security when you reach 62, 65, 67, or 70, right? You can start collecting on it. We all pay into it. Um, you know, if you are put off work and you're disabled and you can't physically work anymore, you can collect your Social Security early. If you are married um, and your spouse dies prior to collecting Social Security, in some instances you can get what's called survivor benefits and... and um, get aid through that way. Um, one of the things that was also created was welfare, the or the aid to families with dependent children. Um, this was something that was administered by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Division that kind of provided, you know, assistance to people, to children whose families had low or no income. So, uh, the wealth tax also elevated a variety of taxes on people that were older, I mean, that were more affluent, and on big corporations, in a sense, generating revenue for, for the government. And then uh, it didn't necessarily redistribute that wealth, and that kind of enraged business leaders. So uh, World War II kind of auto also got us out of the Depression. Um, the quality of American life, however, was kind of precarious or kind of off during the war. Uh, food was rationed, luxuries removed, taxes high, and work was dangerous. So um, this is going to kind of lead to what we're talking about in going into World War II. Uh, the next video is going to kind of concentrate on World War II, and then we'll go into the Red Scare after that and kind of the Cold War. And, and kind of get into that part of history. Okay, so make sure you keep an eye out for that video coming up. Okay, thanks a lot. Have a good one.